Welcome to my course on Genome Editing and Engineering. We are uh, discussing Module 7 uh, on CRISPR-Cas9 uh, technology and uh, in lecture number 3 we were uh, discussing uh, the applications of CRISPR-Cas9 uh, to various uh, fields. Uh, we are continuing our uh, discussion in this part B of uh, lecture 2. One of the area that where uh, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, is used particularly the uh, DCAS9 uh, is the epigenetic editing uh, by CRISPR-Cas. Uh, we have to uh, be a little bit careful over here. Uh, in general, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 wild, wild type uh, is used uh, for genome editing while uh, the dead Cas9 is used for epigenetic uh, editing. Epigenetic chemical modification or uh, on DNA or histone proteins in mammalian cells influence chromatin organization and uh, gene expression. Uh, fusion of DCAS9 with epigenetic uh, enzymatic domains can act as an excellent tool to study the relationship between epigenetic modifications and gene expressions. Epigenetic modifying enzymes example histone uh, demethylase, HDM or methyl transferases, uh, HMT, histone acetyl transferases, HAT, D-acetylase, uh, HDAC and DNA demethylating enzymes, uh, TAT, methyl transferases, DNMT are fused with DCAS9 to control diverse epigenetic states of uh, targeted endogenous uh, genes. So, you can see here the various uh, epigenetic modifying enzyme uh, modules and these are fused with the DCAS9. The 3D organization of uh, chromosomes in the nucleus affect uh, gene expression, recombination and function. Uh, visualization aids in studying the organization of the uh, chromosomes. Uh, existing conventional tools are based on nucleotide base pairing interactions or protein DNA interactions or a combination of the two and imaging is done in dead fixed cells uh, example fluorescence in situ hybridization fish that uses fluorescently labeled oligos uh, to detect DNA sequences in cells. Uh, we can use uh, CRISPR uh, for uh, live cell uh, chromatin imaging uh, by this uh, modification of the CRISPR-Cas uh, system. So, uh, in this case the DCAS9 uh, 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 mediated imaging allows visualization of chromatins in live cells to study the temporal and spatial uh, behavior of the genome in living cells. Uh, single guide RNA dependent enhanced green fluorescent protein or EGFP tagged DCAS9 protein is used to dy dynamically image repetitive elements in both telomeres and uh, coding genes. Programmable uh, DVDs or DNA binding domains based DCAS9 enable genomic imaging at specific loci in cells where natural uh, DVDs are lacking. We can also use CRISPR uh, for multiplexed live cell imaging of non repetitive uh, genomic uh, loci. Uh, Clau et al uh, recently engineered a modular multitasking CRISPR Cas based platform called uh, Casilo by combining DCAS9 and engineered PAF or PAMILO and FBF highly conserved RNA binding proteins in eukaryotes uh, and these are domain tethered uh, effectors. PAF domains contained uh, peptide subunits that can be programmed to recognize an RNA base by changing amino acids contacting the RNA thereby allowing designed PAF domains to bind different uh, octamer uh, sequences. In uh, Casillo, guide RNA is conjugated with one or more binding sites for uh, Pamilio FBF uh, RNA binding domain tether effectors. Each PAF domain contains uh, 8 peptide subunits, uh, each programmable to recognize one of the 4 RNA uh, bases. Uh, a collection of PAF effectors can be created by fusing different effectors to PAF programmed to recognize different uh, octamer path binding uh, sequences. The effectors are required uh, to 
uh, Dcas9 G RNA PBS complex corresponding to the fused path uh, domain. The Casillo architecture allows uh, multiple molecules of the same or uh, different effectors to be recruited to a target as well as a different set of effectors uh, to be recruited at different targets in the same cell. Uh, this system is expandable to potentially over uh, 65,000 uh, possible uh, effectors. The Casillo imaging capitalizes on the multimerization capability to recruit 15 or more fluorescent proteins uh, to a target. The potential for uh, Casillo to achieve multimodal operations simultaneously, uh, example uh, demethylating histone using LSD1 module, acetylating, acetylating histone, then methylating DNA, uh, activating different targets and at the same time uh, monitoring multiple locations with different uh, fluorescent proteins uh, in the live cells. Another application uh, is the CRISPR mediated manipulation of uh, chromatin uh, topology. So, you can see here uh, a decast line uh, having a uh, bound to a, a protein and another decast line bound to uh, another protein and these two prote proteins can uh, dimerize. Okay. Let us see how this is being used for the manipulation of uh, chromatin uh, topology. Targeted engineering of artificial chromatin loops between regulatory genomic regions provide a means to manipulate endogenous chromatin structures to understand their function and contributions to gene expression. This enables the formation of new enhancer promoter connections to overcome certain genetic deficiencies and additionally an aberrantly active enhancer promoter interaction uh, can be inhibited. Uh, Morganatol used two dimerizable protein domains ABI1 and PYL1 from the plant based abscisic acid signaling uh, pathway. Protein dimerization systems were fused to two separate TCAS9 orthologous uh, enabled uh, the forced chromatin loop formation between distal enhancer and uh, promoter reason. This inducible chromatin group result in increased gene expression as uh, we can see that uh, the promoter region and the enhancer regions are brought uh, into a close proximity due to uh, this uh, dimerization reaction. Another application is the spatio-temporal control of uh, CRISPR-Cas9. The gene editing by uh, Cas9 or gene regulation by DCAS9 can be controlled by various innovative strategies like the use of specific promoters, induction by chemicals or induction by light, uh, etc. Spatiotemporal controlling enables the editing or regulation of a gene by CRISPR Cas in a specific cells or tissue type or in a specific uh, time frame. Uh, this helps in reduction of the off target effects chromosomal translocations and genotoxicity uh, which often uh, is caused by the Cas9. Uh, apart from uh, initiating gene editing, spatiotemporal control strategies can be adapted to inhibit the uh, Cas9 activity. Uh, let us see the cell specific uh, promoter application. We know the promoter is an essential element that controls the expression of a uh, gene cassette. Constructing a cell specific promoter to drive the expression of Cas9 nuclease in the target cell is a direct and effective way to realize the spatiotemporal control of CRISPR uh, gene editing. Uh, it also counteracts undesired side effects in non target cells because uh, we have made the expression specific to a uh, particular cell. Uh, here in G, you can see the CRISPR Cas9 plasmid. Uh, driven by the specific promoter resulting in the transcription of Cas9 uh, mRNA and sgRNA in the target cell, but this is not happening in the uh, non-target cell. A Dcas9 can be fused with a activator or a uh, inhibitor uh, which specifically targets the promoter 
or an ancillary region of endogenous genes which induces the up and down regulation of some uh, endogenous uh, loci. So, we have a enhancer or activator here which binds to a promoter and there is uh, activation and here we have a uh, repressure uh, which uh, represses or which suppresses the uh, expression. So, uh, this is a method by which we can simply switch off and switch on and gene easily. Small uh, chemical molecules can be used uh, can be used to control the conformational changes of Cas9 proteins which in turn affects uh, its activity. Uh, for example, uh, in a strategy where a 412 amino acid intain is inserted into two different positions of the Cas9 protein. Uh, SER219 and CIS574 inactivation of the Cas9 nucleus occurs. Uh, Intines or intervening proteins are in frame intervening polypeptides involved in protein splicing by an unique auto processing where it excises itself out and form a, a peptide bonds between two flanking extin. However, by adding uh, 4-HT, a selective estrogen uh, receptor uh, modulator, the intein can be removed by a conformational change and a self cleaving reaction uh, results in reactivation of the Cas9 uh, protein. We can also go for chemical induction uh, dimerization of split fragments of uh, Cas9. So, in figure C you can see an engineered split Cas9 which was generated at two different split sites and produced C and N terminal Cas9 fragments that were bound with FK504 binding proteins uh, 12 and the FKBP uh, rapamycin binding uh, domain or FRB. In the absence of uh, rapamycin, the two fragments uh, remain at different cellular compartments by adding a nuclear localization uh, signal and a nuclear export uh, signal NES and NLS as you can uh, see here. So, chemically induced uh, dimerization of split fragments of Cas9. In figure C, uh, you can see there is a Cas9 uh, C terminus uh, fragment and a Cas9 N terminus fragments and they are having uh, various uh, components like uh, nuclear export signal a nuclear localization signal, then F506 binding protein 12 or FKBP in Cas9 C terminal and uh, FKB rapamycin uh, binding domain in the N terminal. So, there is a condition where you have rapamycin uh, absent and another condition where you have uh, rapamycin uh, present. So, uh, these uh, split Cas9 was generated at two different uh, split sites and uh, in the absence of rapamycin the two fragments uh, remains at different cellular uh, compartments and by adding a nuclear localization signal and a nuclear export signal to the C and N terminal fragments respectively which prevent them from spontaneous uh, reconstitution. In figure C, you, D, you can see the conditional reconstitution and activation of split Cas9 uh, which was achieved by a rapamycin induced uh, heterodimerization. Here both D's N and C terminal uh, got uh, dimerized and this become a assembled uh, Cas9. Accurate gene editing by the CRISPR Cas9 system usually depends on HDR and requires sufficient donor templates at the Cas9 cleavage site, uh, otherwise uh, the reaction is uh, inefficient or less efficient. Uh, to overcome these issues, azide containing non-canonical amino acids was used to modify a Cas9 protein uh, to obtain chemically modified uh, Cas9 uh, mutants. Uh, these variants can bind to dibenzyl cyclooctane or DBCO modified SSODN or DBCO modified DNA adapter, both of which can recruit 
assess audience to the cleavage complex and improve HDR mediated gene editing uh, efficiency. One very interesting application of our CRISPR Cas system is the development of light inducible uh, CRISPR Cas systems. Uh, many many uh, photos responsive molecules have been used to engineer optically control uh, CRISPR gene uh, editing uh, systems. Uh, Azobenzene derivatives, spiropyran derivatives and a group of photosensitive molecules containing O nitrobenzyl moieties are uh, photosensitive which can readily undergo photoisomerization or ester bond cleavage under a light shock. Uh, in a light inducible strategy, optogenetic two hybrid system was developed that contains two independent uh, components, a genomic anchor uh, the D Cas9 system fused to the light sensitive uh, cryptochromic cryptochrome interacting basic helix loop helix uh, CIB1 protein to form the D Cas9. CIB1 uh, complex, a cryptochrome cycadian clock 2 cry 2 fused to a different effector domain uh, to form the cry 2 activator complex uh, was carried out by uh, Ju et al in 2021. So, you can see here this uh, CIB1 and you can see here the uh, cry 2 and you have a target gene over here. Let us let us discuss what is happening in this particular uh, reaction. And you can see here also some uh, source of light and then uh, this reaction is actually uh, reversible in the absence of light in dark uh, the re opposite reaction will um, take place. So, under the stimulation of uh, blue light at around 400 nanometer the C1 B uh, CIB1 effector complex could be recruited to form the biopolymer D Cas9 uh, CIB1 cry 2 effector uh, complex expanding the activation functionality of the Cas9 and incubating the cells in the dark can reverse this uh, activation as already uh, discussed uh, earlier. There are many other applications of CRISPRs uh, and CRISPR Cas9 or CRISPR Cas systems or modify, modified uh, Cas CRISPR systems we are not going to discuss each and every one of them in detail. Some of them are uh, alarmingly, alarmingly very very dangerous although they may have some kind of uh, economic uh, benefit. For example, uh, there is a uh, phenomena called uh, genetic sexing or molecular sexing where uh, a particular population uh, can be uh, engineered to have a, a dominating type of a uh, uh, sex or uh, gender. Uh, for example, here uh, a uh, Cosmo a bull calf uh, has been designed to produce uh, 75 percent uh, male offsprings. Uh, similar experiments has also been carried out in silkworms uh, where uh, the engineering is done in such a way that the male uh, silkworm uh, production is more. So, these are all matters of ethics which we will be dealing it with uh, in, in the uh, towards the end of this uh, course. Then there are various other applications in uh, agriculture uh, where you have the creation of novel alleles of fragrance uh, genes in rice uh, through CRISPR Cas9 uh, mediated uh, gene editing. Then various other uh, uh, applications in disease control. Uh, particularly uh, say knockout of Anopheles gambia uh, which suppresses the malarial uh, parasite uh, in, in infection. And then uh, CRISPR edited algae with high biofuel yield uh, has been created by ExxonMobil. Then development of CRISPR Cas9 system in chlorella vulgaris to enhance lipid accumulation. So, many of these are being looked as solutions to uh, energy crisis uh, in uh, future as well as uh, food crisis and uh, there are a lot of applications in, in uh, cancer uh, research and recently the first human trial of uh, CRISPR based cell therapy was cleared uh, and uh, for particularly for the late stage uh, lung cancer and this is being reported here in this signal transaction and targeted therapy by uh, he 
we know that uh, non-small cell lung cancer accounts for 83 percent of all lung cancer and is the leading cause of cancer related deaths worldwide. Uh, currently immune checkpoint inhibitors targeting either PD-1 or uh, PD-L1 have uh, become part of the standard treatment for late stage PD-L1 expressing uh, NSCLC with no uh, molecular uh, drivers and uh, this is uh, a drug uh, uh, Pembrolizumab uh, which has been uh, defined by National uh, Cancer Institute as a humanized uh, monoclonal immunoglobin uh, G4 antibody which is directed against human cell surface receptor uh, PD-1 with potential immune checkpoint uh, inhibition and anti-neoplastic uh, activities. Uh, this uh, particular uh, drug binds to uh, monoclonal antibody binds to PD-1, an inhibitory signaling receptor uh, expressed on the surface of activated T cells and blocks the binding to and activation of uh, PD-1 by its uh, ligands uh, which results in the activation of T cell mediated immune response against uh, tumor cells. The ligands for PD-1 include program cell death ligand uh, overexpressed on certain cancer cells and program cell death ligand 2 PD-L2 which is primarily expressed on uh, APCs. Activated P1, PD-1 negatively regulates T cell activation and plays a key role in uh, tumor evasion uh, from uh, host uh, immunity. Uh, this monoclonal antibody is FDA approved therapeutic antibody and uh, it is uh, used in uh, various uh, different uh, uh, cancers and the crystal structure of the every fragment of uh, this particular monoclonal uh, antibody uh, pembrolizumab uh, PMFP in complex with the PD-1 OECD uh, has been uh, resolved and uh, these uh, shows are some of the interactions at the uh, molecular level. So, we have already discussed about the mechanism of action of PD-1 and uh, PD-L1 activators. So, you can see here uh, these uh, PD-1s and these are the anti -PD, uh, PD antibodies and then TCR is the T cell receptor, MS, MHC is the major histocompatibility complex and APC is the antigen uh, representing cell and you have the macrobes here and we have the uh, cancer cells. So, uh, the program cell that uh, one or PD-1 receptor is uh, expressed on the activated uh, T cell then also in the B cells and also on uh, macrophages uh, regulatory T cell or tracts and, and natural uh, uh, killer cells. Binding of uh, PD-1 to its uh, uh, B7 family of ligands, uh, program death ligand 1 or PDL2 results in suppression of proliferation and immune responses of the T cells. The activation of PD-1 oblique PDL1 signaling serves as a principal mechanism by which tumors evade antigen specific T cell immunological responses. Antibody blockade of PD-1 or PD-L1 reverses this process and enhances anti-tumor uh, immune activity. So, here is the timeline of FDA approvals of uh, PD-1 and PD-L1 inhibitors in cancer therapy uh, starting from 2014 through 2016 to uh, 2017. Uh, many different kinds of monoclonal antibodies has been uh, developed over the years. And, uh, uh, these are used for uh, different kinds of uh, uh, cancers as you can see in this uh, list and they are very very some of them are used against uh, um, uh, multiple uh, cancers while some of them are uh, very very uh, specific. So, there are so many uh, different kinds of uh, monoclonal antibodies being developed against uh, cancer therapy. Uh, however, monoclonal antibodies have been uh, found out to be very very expensive and uh, one of the alternative approach that, uh, that is being thought of is the uh, gene therapy uh, 
of, of uh, cancer. A group led by Lou uh, wanted to determine whether the P1 edited autologous T cells uh, can be viable alternative to antibody based uh, immunotherapy uh, as we have discussed in the earlier uh, slide. Uh, they took 12 patients uh, and uh, administered uh, transfusion of edited T cells uh, who were monitored for up to 96 weeks for uh, treatment with uh, uh, AE. Uh, and this is the study design. Uh, PBMCs were isolated uh, from patients uh, with late stage NSCLC and uh, these were electroporated with plasmids containing Cas9 and a pair of gRNAs targeting the second exon of PD1 gene. The edited uh, T cells uh, were expanded in vitro for 7 to 40 days before being uh, reinfused uh, back into the patients and were monitored up to 96 weeks for in vivo persistence of edited T cells and uh, disease uh, progression. To evaluate the impact of off target editing by CRISPR Cas9 in edited T cells, uh, Lou and colleagues performed both targeted NGS and unbiased whole genome sequencing to identify the type and frequency of off target mutations. Uh, data suggested off target editing by uh, CRISPR was uh, rare or very low. Uh, this study by Lu uh, and colleagues showed that using ex vivo uh, CRISPR edited PD1 ablated patient derived T cells for cancer treatment is clinically feasible and uh, generally safe. Uh, this finding echoes the conclusions of two other recent clinical studies that also examine the safety and feasibility of CRISPR Cas based uh, cell therapy. In the first study, Ju et al transplanted CRISPR engineered CCR5 ablated hematopoietic stem progenitor cells into a patient with HIV infection and acute uh, lymphoblastic uh, leukemia. There are now many uh, uh, CRISPR based gene therapy uh, in, in the various uh, stages of uh, clinical trials and uh, the list is quite uh, huge and uh, you can uh, refer to uh, frontiers in oncology uh, by and this article by uh, Udin et al. So, you can see the different uh, uh, type of uh, diseases uh, for example, multiple myeloma, melanoma, uh, beta thalassemia and uh, so on sickle cell disease uh, have been attempted. Uh, to be uh, intervened uh, with uh, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, technology and here are the various uh, clinical trial IDs and uh, each disease has some of the popular uh, gene targets like uh, in the case of multiple myeloma uh, TCR uh, alpha and then in thalassemia you have HBB and so on. Uh, this st is quite a big list as you can see uh, which shows uh, the power of the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, mediated uh, therapeutic uh, technologies. So, here are some references which you can uh, go back to for further details of the various topics that we have discussed in these uh, lectures. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.